We started in 2008 and we were focused on building out real-time streaming for web browsers. And over time, we found that there was this growing interest in peer-to-peer -peer audio and video streaming. Around that time that we were getting ready to release it, Google and Mozilla announced their WebRTC initiative in Chrome and Firefox. And we thought, well, hey, isn't this a great opportunity? We can tweak a few things in our stack. We can make it compatible. Um, and so we did that. And then a few years later, uh, we started to work on LiveSwitch, which is our current server-side platform for real-time audio and video streaming and broadcasting, small use cases, big use cases, everything in between. Our customers are attracted to the flexibility of our products. We've designed them in such a way that, that they can be used for virtually anything. And we have customers from all around the world doing all sorts of amazing things with our products. Specifically the telehealth space, the live video streaming, e-gaming, e-sports, and even the virtual classrooms and education space are all really, really attractive areas for, for our products. We've had customers who've come to us and built virtual classrooms, which are connecting students all over the world, from the North America to students in the Middle East, uh, Europe, Asia, together in these, in these virtual exchanges and through live video streaming. They've been able to connect people who would not normally be, be interacting with each other and find that, that common understanding. We're proud to be able to support companies and assist companies and provide products to companies that are flexible enough to build amazing applications that can effectively change, change society. Connecting doctors with patients in remote locations has allowed us to carry out one of our core values, which is community. Being enablers, essentially, is an amazing thing that Frozen Mountain's able to offer with our products. Originally, we were on AWS. Uh, we were approached by Oracle, I believe, in 2017. We were initially quite attracted by the, uh, the cost proposals. So we set up an apples-to-apples -apples comparison. We took what we were doing on AWS, we set up the exact same thing in OCI, same processor types, same number of cores, and uh, we got the same results for about 50% of the price. Our profiling on our software running on AWS servers was running about 33% CPU consumption on average, and running on OCI, we're actually getting about 9%. So we were able to, to start playing with that and saying, okay, well, we can drive the cost down for our customers. We're completely on OCI today. We have 30 to 40 servers, I think, running about now. They're all VMs. They range anywhere from dual core to eight core, depending on if it's in our sandbox environment or QA or production. Um, our entire software platform runs in Kubernetes uh, for resilience and for uh, error handling and, and fault tolerance. So all around, it was a pretty big win for us to move over. Oracle's been able to allow us to deliver flexibility to our customers, reliability to our customers, and excellent performance. We've given them the capabilities to build live video streaming apps that, that always exceed our expectations and even theirs. Cost savings are great, but we're running a live, real-time video streaming platform 24-7. We're extremely sensitive to any variations in performance. We're very sensitive to latency. We're very sensitive to jitter. We're very sensitive to round trip time and packet loss. And so anything that we can do to reduce that means a better experience for our customers across the board. We did a lot of evaluation of the network layer. That was our deal breaker. If the network's not stable, it's a no-go. And for the past year and a half, two years, it's been just rock solid stable. What I like about OCI as compared to something like AWS is when you go into the console, it's very straightforward actually. The technology is very complex um, on its own. So it's nice that there's like a little bit of a simplification there. So certainly for us, the biggest feature that we use all the time is Kubernetes. Kubernetes lets us roll out on a large scale much more than we'd be able to otherwise. So we can just go in, deploy our software, make changes, and continue to innovate and be flexible to what our customers need while still maintaining that high quality and scalability and all the good things Kubernetes brings with it. Partnering with Oracle when we launched our LiveSwitch Cloud. It's been an exceptional experience. We've been able to expand our offerings of LiveSwitch Cloud. Looking forward, we're going into our Cloud's marketplace to also include customers that may want to do it themselves and manage their own infrastructure. We've been able to increase our reach. We've been able to grow our customer base. We couldn't do that without uh, the, the incredible team at Oracle. The support we're getting on Oracle has been really good. We find that even with the low priority support cases, that uh, the response is pretty quick. It's clear that the support team at Oracle is really listening to what we're trying to accomplish, and they're going out and 
trying to figure out how to help us accomplish that in the best way possible. If you're thinking about moving to Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, take the plunge. The servers are stable, the network is stable, the cost savings are great. We can count on it being reliable, we can count on it being scalable, we can count on the Kubernetes engine, and we can really just focus on what we do best, which is building out great software and focusing on new and interesting use cases for our customers. With Oracle, we've been able to deliver LiveSwitch Cloud with incredible performance, exceptional reliability, and overall amazing value.